Hey guys, my name is Pansy and welcome to my BDO Life Skill Gear Progression Guide. In this video, I'm going to go over how you should progress on your gear for life skills, as well as show you the bare power level rotation for gathering to help you get started. This is the third episode of my BDO Beginner series. This is a series which I created to help newer players and beginner players pick up some of the more complex parts of the game and help ease into it because the game could be quite overwhelming in the beginning. But once you understand how everything works and whatnot, it's pretty easy to pick up. If you haven't seen the first two episodes of the beginner series, do check them out if you're a newer player. There's some really useful information in there and I'll keep the links down below. I also dropped a fail stack guide as a reference for how many fail stacks you should be using when enhancing. That's also uh, pretty useful if you're at this stage of the game because you'll probably already be thinking about enhancing your own stuff, etc. So I'll keep the link for that down there as well. If you find this video helpful, please do subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video or go live on YouTube. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comment section down below or ask me on my Discord or on my stream at twitch.tv slash imfanzy. When BDO first came out, life skilling was always around, but it's pretty mediocre. It wasn't until they released Master Gear that it became a strong contender to be one of the best ways to make money in this game and the best ways to progress. So the basis of this video is going to be gear progression regarding the master gear. So if you're on console, don't worry, you guys will get this update sometime soon. And if you're watching this in the future and you already got the update, great. But master gear is the basis of all life skill gear progression. And as your mastery goes up, your potential to make money from life skilling greatly goes up, depending on which life skill you're looking at. Now starting off at nothing, there's one thing you gotta remember. Every level of your life skill you level up, you get a bonus of 5 passive mastery. For example, if you have beginner 2, let's say, that's gonna be a 10 mastery bonus. You can see down here. If you are at artisan 1, that's gonna be about 205, as you see here. So if you're starting off gathering, I'd make it a goal to at least get artisan 1 right off the bat by power leveling but honestly i would say go for master one because it's quite doable if you power level at bear so at master one you get a passive of 255. now how would you go about gearing up to power level so let's say you're starting off at zero mastery i would recommend using this starting off at beginner one you'd want to use a late toe and once you get to skilled fi you want to switch to a magic hoe i'll explain why the late so has a base of 30% uh, gathering item drop rate, and it gives you 200 mastery. The higher your mastery, the higher this goes up passively. But the magic co has a base of 80%, which is almost equivalent to having about 600 to 650 mastery, I believe. I'm not exactly sure on the number, but once you can break 600 mastery, you want to stop using the magic co and just use your life skill gear. So let's say you're at skilled five now. Now the reason why we're using this setup here is the point of leveling up in the beginning is going to be for the XP. So you wanna maximize that. And also when you're using a magic tool, the additional mastery is not taking effect. So you wanna go with the silver embroidered clothes for the extra gathering XP. And the Duologia set is very cheap and easy to obtain. And it also gives you passive life skill XP. So these are really good to start off and you can take this all the way until if you're going for artisan one you can take it to artisan one but personally i recommend going all the way to master with it it will be a bit of a time consuming grind but it's definitely worth it you can start making decent money once you're at master one you can sooner but of course like i said everything's gonna scale but anyway let's assume that you're at master one now i forgot to mention for your alchemy stone, you want to use a life spirit stone all the way until the point you can afford a cons heart because this gives you a decent amount of stats and it's quite easy to obtain. Now when upgrading your life skill gear, you got to understand the three tiers of the gear. Um, there's Logia, there's a blue, and there's Manos. Now you don't need to go from Logia to the blue, then to the Manos. You can go directly from Logia to the Manos. Now they scale accordingly and are increasingly expensive. So Logia is the cheapest, but gives you the least amount of mastery. The blue over here, the Carta Gatherer's Clothes is of moderate price, but I think it's not worth the amount you're spending. It gives you more mastery than Logia's, but like I said, you're gonna be spending more. And Manos obviously is the best and gives you the most amount of mastery and it's quite expensive. 
So personally, I'd say start off with the Logia, get a full Tri Logia set. Now here we have the full Tri Logia set with the late stool. I'm gonna show you how to get this now, but at Master One Gathering, you're at 737 Mastery, and that's a pretty solid place to be and a good point to start making money at. Now let's take a look at how to get the late stool. Now to get the late stool, you wanna be at Northern Wheat Plantation, which is directly northeast of Calpheon. Over here, you have the node manager Normal Late. Speak to her and press chat and you have the options to rent the tool you want. So for example, let's take the hoe here and as you can see the stats, it's equivalent to a Tet Logia tool, but it has the bonus of 10% gathering XP. So this is an excellent tool to start off with gathering and it's definitely a good first tool. Now, once you're at this point, your goal is gonna be getting to soft cap life skill gear. So that's gonna be a Tet Manos clothes, Tet Manos tools and Tri Manos accessories with the cons heart. Now the cons heart is the most expensive of the lot, but that's the last piece we're gonna be getting. Now anyway, the way I would start off is first get the clothes because the clothes you can get at Tet Manos clothes and it gives you gathering mastery for all the gathering you're gonna be doing. So let's get that. And immediately after, depending on what your primary gathering um, activity is, you wanna get the tool. So if you guys have seen my coaching video with Agent Russ, you'll see that uh, the method for the rough stone is a really good one that I used. So for here as my first tool, which I personally bought was the Manos uh, pickaxe. So I got a Tet gatherer's clothes and then immediately a Tet Manos tool. And then from here onwards, I started upgrading for the accessories. I went straight to try Manos. Now, when I started off, I actually didn't have a Tri Logia set. I had Tri Clothes, but I had Tet Logia set because I used to enhance uh, Logia accessories for profit and I made all my own Logia gear. So it's it was helpful to have those, but it's not necessary. You can definitely uh, do what I'm explaining with just a Tri set. Now, once you're uh, ready to start uh, upgrading the accessories, what I first did was the belt, but I regret doing that because the bonus I got from the belt was basically just the weight bonus, which wasn't a big deal in my opinion, because I already had a lot of weight. So the tri manos belt gave you a lot of weight bonus compared to the others, and the mastery bonus isn't much different from the necklace. It's the same as a necklace, but it's not much different from the ring and the earrings. So personally, I'd go for these first, just because these, instead of having weight bonus, they have base life skill XP bonus. So for example, let's take the ring over here. And when you look at Tri, it has 8% base life skill uh, XP bonus. And also these Manos gears have a set bonus. So there's a two set bonus for every two Manos pieces you have, or Tri Manos pieces you have, uh, you get 5% life skill XP. All right, over here you see my Manos accessories. Um, actually, that two set bonus is not just Tri Manos, it's for uh, all Manos. But the 8% life skill bonus that's on the individual ring, the individual earring, and the necklace, that's dependent on the level of the gear. So for example, let's take a look at a base Manos piece. So a uh, base necklace, for example, is gonna have only 2% as the item effect. But if you go up to Pry, it's 4%. Uh, duo is 6% and Tri is going to have 8%. So because of that reason, I recommend starting off with the rings, earrings, and the necklace and buy the belt last because the amount of mastery you're getting from the rings and the earrings is almost as the same as the belt. The belt is only 10 more and the necklace is um, the most out of all of them. So you could probably start with the necklace because these are all priced the same. Uh, the base prices of Manos and how you acquire them it's all the same, so their prices are usually within the same ballpark. They do fluctuate though. So personally, whenever I'm buying these, I always get them at min price. Otherwise, I'm like, I don't wanna pay the extra four or 500 mil. All right, so let's recap really quick. We started with the Tet Manos Gatherer's Clothes, the Tet Tool, then the Tri Accessories. I started off with the rings, earrings, the necklace, and finally the belt. Now, the last thing you have is going to be the Consart. It is the most expensive but it's definitely worth getting because you get 25 to all life skill mastery. And now you're finally at soft cap. Now, once you're at soft cap, that's a good place that you can sit at and start making money, start going out gathering and really stacking up the cash. But if you do want to progress, you got to keep a few things in mind. At this point, everything's going to be exponentially more expensive. For example, the Tet clothes over here are 3.4 bill on NA, but the pen clothes are 29.6 and there's one listed for over 30. 
So if you're spending that additional 26, 27 bill on this piece of gear for that 100 mastery, is that 100 mastery really gonna pay itself off? Probably not. So you gotta decide, are you going all in to reach that 2K mastery point where you're making the real big money? Or do you wanna just settle for what you have right now and just start making some good cash? Now, if you are going for the all in end game, 2K mastery and whatever, you'd probably wanna start thinking about enhancing your own stuff. It is a risk, you might not get it. You might spend way more enhancing than uh, just buying it, but it, it's a risk you're gonna have to weigh for yourself and decide uh, how you wanna do it. Uh, same thing for the accessories. Those are also pretty expensive. For example, here, the Tri are three bill, whereas the Tet are 15 bill. Now these are a bit more reasonable compared to the clothes, but at the same time, the amount of mastery you're gaining from the clothes is a lot more. Here you're gaining 30% mastery and 2% life skill bonus. So at the same time, you're gonna have to decide how you're gonna progress and how much you're willing to risk. Me personally, I'm gonna stay at soft cap with my life skill gear and just make some money, uh, get some Kafra stacked up and just uh, try to progress my gathering level. But I would honestly say uh, that's gonna be a personal choice, uh, how you wanna go about it. So just uh, give it a shot for a few months, see how you enjoy gathering and see if it's something you see yourself doing for the next year or so. Uh, you gotta think the long game with these pieces of gear where they cost exponentially more. But let me show you where I power leveled my gathering, at least that'll get you started off. All right guys, now we are in Bear, which is a little town which is directly east of Trent and south of Calfion. Over here, I have a residence. Now, I'm showing you this because it's pretty important to set up your power leveling. So in my residence, I have a storage container which gives me access to the storage of Trent. Now to acquire a storage container, you can go to any storage keeper in a major city, talk to them, and you can rent it for 10 contribution points. So with the late stool, that's 50, you're gonna need another 10 for the storage container. That's gonna be a total of 60 contribution points. But also, I have a little bed here. The reason I have this bed is because when you're sleeping in your bed, it gives you a bonus to your energy recovery. So depending on the bed you have, it's gonna be one or two. Uh, one of my other characters has the two energy uh, recovery bonus bed, um, so not this one. I usually never AFK on this character because I always have buffs running. So I'm spamming energy potions. So with the combination of the energy potions you get off the marketplace or make with your alts, plus the energy potions from the cash shop, you can have infinite energy and you can gather endlessly. Now, that is kind of expensive. So I personally don't spend like too much on the energy potions. Every week, uh, they have a half off sale for 11 potions plus three life skill scrolls. I just pick up those and let it stack up. But it's really up to you. If you wanna be patient and a better person than me, you can de definitely wait and let your energy recover passively. A few things to remember when doing that. Definitely have a Kama Souls Blessing for the bonus two. Uh, you can also use your tent, which is really important here. You can use it to repair. Um, if you don't have a tent, you can actually repair in the town over there. But uh, the tent is really good because it gives you the Turing Gates buff. So with the Turing Gates, what it does is it gives you a life skill EXP bonus but it also gives you plus one energy recovery. So if you look over here, it's one energy recovery plus 10% life skill XP. Now that's really important. And if you can afford it, that's great because the tent is one of those pay to win things in this game that is really useful all the way throughout the duration of the game. All right, now let's take a look at how to click to gather. This is a question I get a lot in my videos and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So what you do is go to your settings and just type in move. Uh, you'll see um, mouse to, use mouse to move option, which is you can go to settings, you can go to mouse interface and you can enable it here. Once it's enabled, every time you uh, press control and get your cursor out, you'll see this glowing beacon. That means if you click on the ground, left click on the ground, you'll start walking over there and you can use your right click to turn the camera. So what you can do with this is to gather, it's really easy. All you do is you just find an herb you wanna gather. Um, you can be at a distance and you'll be able to gather. You wanna hover your mouse over the uh, item you wanna gather. You'll see that the mouse turns into a chat bubble when you're over it and the beacon actually pops onto it. It snaps onto that item. So you just right click it and the interface pops up here. 
Once this interface pops up, you can just press R and you gather. And that's how you uh, click to gather. This is really important when you're power leveling bear because if you do it the old fashioned way, it's really slow and it's really boring. So that's just one thing you gotta remember. And once you're used to it, this suddenly becomes a lot more chill to do. Now, in addition to click to move, um, you also want to have a hedgehog pet. So for your pets, you want to maximize your life skill XP bonus if you can. Uh, here I am slacking off a bit. One of my pets doesn't have life skill XP bonus, but uh, anyway, it's pretty decent. I got a lot of uh, gathering XP stacked up and also the hedgehog. It has the special effect, which let, uh, lets you almost double gather every now and then. And it really increases the amount of resources you're gathering. So these are all little pay to win things that help you out. But if you're looking to gather long term and make that a real mainstay, you definitely need a hedgehog pet. So a hedgehog pet and the campsite are really useful. If you can get them, please do, because it's going to save you a lot of trouble. <laughs> all right, with the basics out of the way, let's take a look at the rotation. Now you want to maximize your buffs. Generally, I'll run the Alchemy Stone, Turin Gates. These are the guild buffs. Whenever you can get them, that re they really help. Um, but I will use a seafood cron meal for the life skill bonuses. You get 25 life skill mastery and 10% XP and I'll use the verdure draft. So the four buffs I try to maintain at all times are going to be the seafood cron meal, Turin gates, alchemy stone and the draft. So I like to start over here at this tree right here and I like to gather these over here. Once you're done with those, I come over through this way follow these herbs there's a few here now there's a few here which don't ever um, actually become gatherable they're just there for show I guess <laughs> anyway then you come around this way and there's a huge amount of herbs right here you want to gather all of these right here work your way to this tree pick up the one over here and start moving to this tree now all around here there's a bunch of herbs so you want to pick all of these up start swinging away uh, this way and all the way to this rock and this is where I usually drop my tent and then you come over to this tree and you're pretty much done here and you can restart by cutting across and starting from the beginning again. And that's basically your full rotation here. Um, like I said, I use energy drafts so, or energy potions to constantly gather for hours on end. It's really mind numbing. So make sure you're watching some TV or talking to friends or something and make it a bit easier on yourself. But with click to move, it's pretty chill. And it's a really quick way to level up your gathering. The more XP buffs you have, the quicker it goes. That's about it over here. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And let's see. I think one of the best things that you can do when starting off is just go ahead and get that mastery level up. Get it to Artisan 1 or Master 1. Definitely get to Master 1 if you have the patience to. Um, that base mastery level really helps out. And once you're at soft cap, that's when you start making money properly and start focusing on money. You can make money a lot sooner. Like for example, with about 800 mastery, I think I was making close to almost 100 mil an hour at sheeps, honestly. Uh, the, that's like with a calculation of a full hour of gathering, not just uh, all the energy I had. I think if I dumped about 350 energy, I was getting around 70 mil at the time, but it fluctuates depending on servers. And also remember whatever you gather, you don't want to just sell it right off the bat. You can actually process it or cook it for more money. For example, if you're gathering wolf meat uh, near Valia over here, uh, you're going to be able to uh, sell it right off the bat or you can turn it into something else and sell it. Like when I was gathering sheep, sheep meat is a lot cheaper than wolf meat. So I would turn the sheep meat into red sauce. Uh, my cooking was done in Heidel. I just run over here AFK cook while my energy recovered. And then I'd sell the red sauce or use it for cooking. So getting into gathering is really good. It's good money, but try to look into other life skills where you can utilize what you're gathering and make more money off it. In a future video, we'll talk about cooking. But for now, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Please do like, comment and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below how your life skill gear progression is going. And check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Until next time, take it easy, guys. Bye.